St. John Lilly's 100th birthday, we present the Lily Pond. This is, this is a tank like John saw on the tables when he came in in the 80s, but it is a much revised, totally revised, totally redone tank. It's knee high. The height of the tank is this much. In the top is a door. You step in, and then you, the top has a hinge on that end. And you grab the top and you lift up this end. And now the top is angled like this and it stays up on its own and there's a curtain between the top and the bottom that keeps out light and keeps in moisture. Close the door, go down and float. When you're finished floating, you open the door, you push the top down and you step out a little bit higher than that. And now it can be used as furniture, as a couch or a bed. Or if you don't want to use it as such, then it takes up a very small footprint and the size of it, the footprint, is the same as what Michael Crichton floated in when he had his tank. He was six foot nine. Michael Jordan is six foot three. Ninety-nine percent of the people are six foot three or less. And Michael Crichton was 6'9". After he got out of the tank the first time, Lee asked him how was the size of the tank. He said it was fine, no problem. He went on later to sell 200 million books <laughs> as a, I think, just as a result of floating and I don't know why he didn't give us 5% of royalties. <laughs> there are three benefits I'd like to mention about this new tank. First is it's environmentally friendly. The materials are environmentally friendly. The production methods are very environmentally friendly and the energy required to keep it maintained, heated and so on, is incredibly small amount. We expect it to be able to be, uh, for that to cost less than $5 per month. It is also very easy. It will be installed for the people. If you wish to install it for them, you can do so, or we will get it installed for them. Uh, it is, will be the easiest to take care of tank in the world, uh, and it's convenient. It will be at their place, takes up very little space, they can use it any time, day or night, weekend, at a moment's notice. Not only is it easy and inexpensive to take care of, it is also inexpensive to buy. It will be uh, $6,000 to $8,000 is the price of it. And, the, and you, if you choose to sell it, will get at least $1,000. Let me put that in perspective. When we were selling tanks at a center, we sold five a month. So that would be $5,000 to you. In a year, that's $60,000. $60, Would you be able to use that amount 
of additional revenue in your center? Okay, good. Uh, the last thing is that it is uh, designed for long life. Lee and I have a tank in our bedroom that is 25 years old. It's just four steps from our bathroom and right inside the bathroom is our shower. That tank, I would estimate that it's got another 10 years life in it. That may be saying more for it than us. <laughs> Well, the uh, last year, of that vintage tank, between 20 and 25-year-old tank, was uh, listed on the internet for more money than we sold it for new. <laughs> now, maybe that says more about, of our, uh, about our economy than about our tank, but just the same, it means that somebody thought that tank was still good enough to sell for a lot of money. The tanks that we've made in the last 20 years are more durable than those tanks, and this new tank will be far more durable than the tanks we're making now. I expect that, it, that these will last 50 to 100 years, so your customers will be able to pass them on to their children and make lots of money on them for resale value. <laughs> so there's uh, forms that you can fill out here and you can join. There is no obligation to do it. Uh, if you choose to do it, you will make $300 on the first five tanks that you sell. Extra, you mean? Extra. So that's fifteen extra, fifteen hundred extra more dollars. What? Uh, now, question. Well, one, oh, one no, other more. thing. There, you will receive three things from that. Uh, if you if you join, one is marketing materials. The second is you will receive uh, installation training if you choose to, if you wish to be an installer, and three you will get sales training. We were very concerned when John told us to sell tanks from a center to our floaters. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the body is taking over. <laughs> I had organophosphate poisoning. It, uh, the nerve toxin wipes out the what wiped out the right side of my brain and so I don't know whether you can see but but my right leg is up here going like this. <laughs> uh, I hope it's not as uh, distracting for you as it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the last thing is the uh, sales training. We were worried about how on earth could we could we sell to somebody who was in such a delicate state coming out of, the, out of their float? And we talked to John about it, and he helped us figure that out. And so we will provide that information to you. We will train you in that kind of sales training, kind of sales. So please join us in turning on millions to floating by selling the lily pond and increase the revenue of your tank of your center. Uh, there's a, there's a Papers will be uh, passed out, and you will now entertain questions. Uh, <coughs> oh, good. Uh, I have a question. 
So, um, Sean from Float Seattle. Uh, we have we have two Samadis for those of you who are, uh, who are in the audience. We absolutely love them. Um, I'm curious, are the Lily Blondes gonna uh, gonna have the same materials that the that our versions have? No, the materials are going to be significantly better. They're an order of magnitude better. Uh, they they will actually be costing us more than twice as much as the current materials. And just as a side note, our Samadhi tanks in Seattle are phenomenal. I mean, absolutely beautiful. We have life-changing experiences every day in your guys' tanks, so thank you. And this is very cool. I'm very excited for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Met you before. <laughs> Been having great lunches together. Thank you. But uh, my question is, how were you guys feeling at first when you had tanks and then you would be selling tanks to somebody that would be a regular customer? Weren't you afraid that might interfere with people coming in and then losing a regular customer to selling a tank? Uh, <coughs> I think uh, that, may I answer? Please. I think. Some people don't want to float in the center. And I don't think that it's true that you actually lose a customer. The people who want to have a tank at home are different from the ones who want to come into a center. That's what I've discovered, and that's why we told that story. The, the other thing is maybe you will lose a customer, but you will be getting at least $1,000 up front you don't know whether that person is going to float that many times. So it's kind of like a bird in the hand. The other thing is they may go on to give you incredible word of mouth. Thank you. Uh, so I probably have a question that everybody has. Um, when will it be available and do you have pictures? That's my question too. <laughs> Uh, we, we expect to be able to go in production uh, by John's birthday. That's in January. And if you uh, fill out the form, we will keep you uh, informed. We'll uh, send you pictures and so on. Yes? Glenn and Lee. Um, so I'm from Float House in Vancouver. Oh. And I wanted to tell you, um, pardon me, it's getting so emotional. Um, your work in all of this is so impressive. And I think uh, being here and hearing you guys speak on behalf of Lily is a real honor. And so I think all of us here want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And then the second part uh, that I wanted to address is um, what was your intention when getting involved with this? Uh, I guess just like obviously you could probably talk about it for days, but what was it that piqued your interest um, once you got to know John C. Lilly? And yeah, I'd just like to hear from you guys. Well, you actually, it was you who started, he, he went to this workshop uh, with um, John Lilly in, up in Big Bear, which is just north of uh, LA. And this was the shyest person that you ever met. I mean, he couldn't talk to anybody. And uh, he That's was- That's why I'm not talking now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I always tell that story because he won't tell it. And, um, he, uh, they had a makeshift tank. There were no tanks at that time because he produced tanks. And it, it was a, a rock with a bowl cut out of it and a, a makeshift shack on top. And they spent the first day with mudding up the cracks in, in that shack. And then, could you keep going now? Sure. Okay. And so I was one of the first that floated uh, how we did it was the, the solution was 20 inches deep. This is the way John did it after he got rid of the breathing apparatus and went to a smaller tank. 
and uh, you would lie on your back and you would, uh, since there was no salt, uh, you would hold your breath and then do dolphin breathing. When you needed to breathe, you would exhale and inhale. And then when you needed to breathe again, you would do that. And so I did that for an hour. And afterwards, John asked me to share my experiences of my float. And I re was reasonably comfortable doing that. And I thought, wow, <laughs> if something could make me comfortable talking to people, it must be really incredible. And I right then decided I had to have my own. I was going to, as soon as I got home, I was going to build one. Well, it was a five-day workshop, and by the end of the five days, I thought, geez, some other people are going to want this. And so I said to John, uh, what do you think of me making them for other people? He was a scientist. He wasn't a businessman. He loved the idea because they weren't available. And he said, call it Samadhi Tank Company. So it's, it started. I was a systems computer programmer at the time. Uh, I did it part-time for two years. And then I met Lee. And after seeing her for a month, we decided we were madly in love with each other and wanted to be with each other 24 hours, hours a day. And we decided to do the business full time and haven't stopped fighting since. <laughs> I promise I won't give you that. Hi, uh, big fan, of course. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to come see you guys at your wonderful farm in Grass Valley and see what you're doing there um, off like off the grid, growing your own food, um, continuing that, that part of your lives that is really important to you as well. Um, and I'm wondering if you have anybody in your lives that is uh, doing a biography of you guys. Um, and if not, I'd like to volunteer for that and spend time to hear, hear your stories and if you're open to it and um, putting it on film for like a legacy uh, of who you are and, and what you've offered to this industry and um, continue the gift and, and make it so it's uh, really unforgettable. So uh, if you're open to that, I would love to um, be a part of your legacy and your biographies. Thanks, that's Thank very sweet. That's really sweet, Adam, thank you. We'll, we'll talk about that and we'll see you at home. <laughs> we, we, we actually have a... Uh, we we have on our uh, on our list of things to do to is to uh, do the history of our company and our things. Yeah. But we'll talk. Okay. Thanks very much for being here.